Professor Black, thanks very much for being here with us. My first question is that you discuss the need to distinguish between the effects of military technologies and non-military technologies. Why is it important to consider non-military technology when looking at relative success or failure in conflicts? Non-military technology is both directly uh, consequential for war, one's thinking for example of the medical technologies and, that, and clean water that help to keep troops uh, effective and operative, but also it plays a very fundamental role in the strength and prosperity of particular societies and therefore their capacity to produce the resources for conflict. Why is it not necessarily the case then that the conflicting party with the greater military technology uh, or overall technology is, is not dominant in the conflict itself? There is obviously an approach to international relations and war which very crudely provides materialistic explanations for success. One can think of those accounts of World War II, for example, which argue that the Allies were almost bound to win because they had greater industrial capability from 1941 onwards. But the problem with those, is those accounts are multiple. First of all, it dramatically underrates the fact that war does involve fighting and that uh, factors uh, linked to military capability in the field, unit cohesion, morale, leadership, tactical skill are all important to that. In that. Second, uh, emphasizing resources uh, doesn't really deal with the issue of willpower and the determination to persist in a struggle. And thirdly, I, I think a key element of weaponry and the uh, capacity to develop uh, effective new weaponry is that it can be countered by your other side either matching your weaponry or, more commonly, if they're a weaker um, society, developing anti-weaponry of certain types, so the anti-tank gun as opposed to a, uh, is a, as opposed to a tank, or uh, developing tactics or strategies that uh, enable them to counter your advantage. Why are the cultural variables uh, important in determining both the output for and the, out uh, the outcome of uh, military conflict? Cultural variables are, in a sense, a catch-all. Uh, they cover up a wide range of factors. But what I would argue is cultural factors not only are bound up in the effectiveness of individual militaries, what one might think of in terms of organisational culture, but they also um, reflect the extent to which different societies have differing assumptions of victory, defeat, suffering and loss, and also construct the idea of the desirability of war in very different fashions. And those factors help to link in to these questions of persistence and willpower. And lastly, um, the willingness to respond to defeat by, as it were, cooperating with the power that has defeated you is not a given, it's not invariable but it reflects political and cultural factors in your own society. Professor, thank you very much. Thank you.